Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Last night we did a live stream as PayPal announced that it's going to accept cryptocurrency payments on its platform. So today I want to do a short video and recap the news but then look at the charts because it's been nearly 24 hours that the news has been out and we want to see whether that news has had some effect on the markets itself. Now with some huge news like this, you would expect it to pump the price. Even Elon Musk's tweets pumped Bitcoin price more than PayPal. Funny that. So I've got a tweet on my Twitter page. So if you want to come across and join Twitter, be sure to go over there and follow me. Follow me over there, Jason Pizzino. Was the breaking PayPal crypto payments news priced into crypto prior to the announcement on 30th of March? Yes, priced in 65%, no pump incoming, 35%. So just a, an hour or two old here, 120 votes. Keep your votes coming at the moment. Most people think it's been priced in. Very interesting. All right, let's have a look at the trends now. I just have two trends today. PayPal crypto, PayPal Bitcoin. They all spiked last night as we were coming in, well, as the news was released. PayPal crypto, PayPal Bitcoin, right up there. And now they have basically died off at this point. So I think that that news has been priced in. It's definitely run its course. And I don't think we'll see any moves in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin uh, related to PayPal in the near future. If they move, it's based on something else. Fear and greed, 76. We are have now creeped up into the extreme greed section. So we are now in that territory where people are getting really, really cocky about what it is we should be investing in, altcoins, pumps, alt season, etc. Market cap, we are at $1.8 trillion, $1.1 trillion on Bitcoin. 200 million Ethereum, and I'll do a video today as well coming up on, on Binance. It's had a very good run today. It's just down a couple of bucks from where it was at its its high today, and it has pushed past 300 and broken some resistance points. So I'm going to do a separate video on that, whereas today we're going to look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin to uh, recap and to update the charts and see where they're going from this point. Now, I should have mentioned, hit the like button down below if you find some value from the content. Subscribe to the channel, getting close to 110,000. We've got the giveaway coming up next week so if you want to be involved in the giveaway go down to the description leave your email address there there's a easy link to follow and that's a free 12 month membership to the investor accelerator membership course so bitcoin ethereum litecoin is on the brink brink of dropping out of the top 10 if we get a move on with Chainlink. let's recap the news paypal now allows crypto spending at millions of merchants PayPal has started allowing US users to spend their cryptocurrency holdings at millions of online merchants. Development means PayPal users who hold Bitcoin, Ether, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin in PayPal digital wallets can now convert their crypto holders into fiat to make purchases. So you've got to convert it into fiat to make purchases. This is what has been reported. It's not like you can just pay for, pay for it with Bitcoin, basically sell it, and then pay for something with your fiat. Kind of like the way that the crypto.com app works. We think it is a transitional point where cryptocurrencies move from being predominantly an asset class that you buy, hold, and or sell to now becoming a legitimate funding source to make transactions in the real world at millions of merchants. So it is gaining legitimacy. This is what we were betting on in 2019 and 2020. The gamble back then was that cryptocurrency would become legitimate. Most people didn't gamble on that. Most people didn't bet on that it would happen. It is happening and now they're coming into the space. This is how and why we need to really pay attention to the space that we're in early on in the piece. And yes, there does come a hell of a lot of risk at that time because nothing is guaranteed, but that's the risk that you're taking looking at what's happening in the world moving forward and why you think Bitcoin or Ethereum would have been a great investment back in 2020. You know that you've seen it on my Instagram where I post my super fund, my retirement fund, uh, my holdings where I've got Bitcoin and Ethereum, which uh, have basically been bought since 2017. 26 grand put into those, currently at around 245 grand today. You see that on my Instagram. One tenth, this is big for Bitcoin. One tenth of a Bitcoin derivatives giant CME group to launch micro BTC futures contracts. So essentially there are Bitcoin futures. Now CME is launching a micro contract. So you only need one tenth of a Bitcoin. So you're basically trading with one tenth of a Bitcoin. You don't own the one tenth of a Bitcoin, but the contracts represent 0.1 of a Bitcoin. Now you see this in traditional markets where they'll break down the contracts and make them smaller. Biggest case in the world, the biggest example is the S&P 500. So you trade the E-mini, you don't trade the 
Most people don't trade the S&P 500 because the contract size is too big. You need to have too much cash in there. So most people trade the E-mini. This is similar. This is what's going on here. And we are starting to see a maturity, a maturing phase of cryptocurrency into traditional markets. So very exciting news. Stimulus, more stimulus coming. President Biden and Senate Democrats press for another $3 trillion. This is... They, they've already got 2.25 now. It was 1.9, then there was 2.25, which I saw earlier on Meet Kevin's channel. So that means they still they have a total of about 1.75 to come out of their 4 trillion. There's another 3 trillion. We're just, look, there's trillions on top of trillions on top of trillions. I don't know when it's going to end. Who knows when it's going to end? What do you think about the US government's pushing out a $3 trillion relief bill after passing the recent 1.9 trillion? just a few weeks ago. So it looks like a total of around $5 trillion. I mean, what's $100 billion among friends? If you ever watch Benjamin Cohen, what's a few trillion among friends? Basically, $5 trillion, $2 trillion now, $3 trillion later. Let's just keep the money printer rolling in. This may be a big reason that we can continue to see a Bitcoin bull market carry on longer than we're expecting. It's all speculation. So far, that is what we've seen. So I guess people are kind of getting used to that. See money, go buy Bitcoin. Speaking of which, let's check out the Bitcoin chart. Now, this is the level that I'm watching up here. We've got a high $60,080. So this is what we're looking at on last night's live stream. Uh, it's about two hours long, so there's a lot of Q&A in the live stream as well. You can go back and check it out if you like. Basically, top in here at 60,000, we've got our alert set. I'm seeing lower volume coming up. So what we want to happen is for today's action to test the 60,000, call it 60,100 and close above it. That would be ideal because that would be our second highest close in Bitcoin history. The highest close is the 12th of March so far. And so if we can get that close, that basically pushes us more into the bullish sense. And all we have to do then is wait for this top to be taken out, which is only a few percent away. Now, I have to sort of put myself in the mind of a, a new trader or a beginner who doesn't really understand percentages or market caps. Uh, and this is not having a go at anyone. I just, the comments that I see, I guess people don't really understand what it is, that, like how to invest. And basically, when, for Bitcoin, it's a really high price. A lot of people still don't realize they can just buy a fraction of Bitcoin. They think they have to buy one whole Bitcoin. The other side is some people forget that if Bitcoin moves $1,000 or $3,000, and I know most of you probably already get this, so apologies about that, but if this thing moves from where it is now at 59500 to break the top of 61, 62000 it's really only a 4% move, but this will get the biggest headlines that we will ever see because we're breaking into new all-time territory, but it's only a 4% move. Most people in crypto won't get out of bed for 4%. It's a waste of time. So just keep that in mind as the headlines will begin to come out. Sure, many of us on YouTube will be posting about the same thing. Bitcoin, new all-time highs. It catches attention. This is, this is what it is. So what I'm saying here is there's a 4% move above. For me, the way I trade is to wait for confirmations. And so there is no confirmation just yet in my trading plan to say enter a position. Now, like I said, I've already got a decent... Bitcoin position and I'm not looking to enter yet, but if I found a great opportunity to bring in fresh money to Bitcoin, then I would. And my big opportunity is somewhere if we were to test these lows here at, at 50,000 and bring it back to around 45,000. Now this is a very, uh, the 40,000 to 45,000 level is very optimistic to get a very cheap Bitcoin, but I don't throw anything out at the moment. You know, like it looks like we could be heading up higher, but these volumes just keep dying out and more and more and more. Sure, there isn't as much selling pressure, but there isn't as much buying pressure either. So it can only lead to so far before we get a significant correction or uh, just a pause until we reaccumulate. I would like to see it here, but I don't control the market. I would like to see a reaccumulation happening where we are here from around this 45 to around that 62. You know, this is just a good area to get some more Bitcoin in uh, into those bags. And of course, if we get to pull back, that would be great. Let's break it down to the hourly chart because we have just seen a little bit of a break above these highs. That's that's what we want to see as it begins to climb its way to the next target right here. But last night, 
we were watching this waiting for something to happen because of the PayPal news. And the news came out around 7 to 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Queensland time. So that's these two bars here. And we saw it move up for the two hours and then nothing, just faded, faded on the news. So the news did have, I would say, basically no effect. If you wanted to call it from the time at the bottom of this bar to where it faded out, you got about a 1.3% effect on Bitcoin. We, we all know Elon Musk has had a bigger effect on Bitcoin than PayPal. Funny that Elon Musk created PayPal or was, you know, he was the inventor of the, in the first place of PayPal and sold it to Peter Thiel. I've got to go back and check my figures on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the story there. Let's swing across to Ethereum and Litecoin, ETH USD. We're starting on the hourly chart here. So let's go back to 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 p.m. Aussie time. And that's all we had from Ethereum. Overall, we're basically at exactly the same level to where we were when the news broke. That's it. So PayPal has had next to no effect on Ethereum. We're coming up to a double top here. On Ethereum, I think we're going to get a bigger break than we will from Bitcoin. That's like, uh, obviously, that's almost guaranteed for a lot of people. This to me is another reaccumulation zone. And you probably heard that over YouTube as well. Uh, and you've heard the opposite. A lot of people selling Ethereum. I, I, I am not selling any of my Ethereum at this point. I see Ethereum going a lot further than $1,800. And this is my safest play out of all of them with the highest return. Now, Ethereum has a lot of stuff built on it. We know that. It's slow. It, well, I mean, it's kind of slow. Gas fees are high. Doesn't matter. It's actually usable. Cardano... I'm sorry to say, there is nothing on Cardano. Sure, it could be coming. That's what we're all speculating on. But Ethereum is being used now. Same deal with Binance. And so I'm going to do a video on Binance as well. PancakeSwap. That stuff is hot. And they, they have a huge ecosystem and making a profit. So Ethereum, this is a big wind-up in my books. Look at the volume drying up in a range trading uh, pattern up here. So we're looking at these lows. So let me use this over here. They're the lows. They're the highs. This is what we want to see. And in these patterns, in these triangle patterns at the tops, that's generally what happens is the volume begins to dry up. And even on the dips down, there's not as much because not as many people are selling. And the people who have sold, you've got the buyers coming in just snapping up what they can before the price goes in the opposite direction. So Ethereum is looking very, very bullish to me right now. Very bullish. This is one of the majors that I'm buying along with Binance. I haven't bought Binance in a very, very long time, but it is winding up again. It looks really good. So I'll talk about that later. As I said, Ethereum, very, very good. Let's look at Ethereum BTC before we check out a Litecoin. Okay, so Ethereum BTC, why, why we check this is that we want to make sure that our investments are increasing in Bitcoin value as well. So some of you still don't get that. That's fine. You know, you're new to the space and it's really confusing already to just understand crypto against fiat currency. But now we're including uh, crypto versus another crypto, and we're just going to compare it to the king. The king is Bitcoin. And so Ethereum is finding some strong volume here. The point is we want to reduce our risk. That's why we're comparing it to another cryptocurrency. So if the crypto that I'm looking at here, say Ethereum, continues to trend down against Bitcoin, like it did previously, then you're much safer just holding Bitcoin because you're losing all this Bitcoin value. You could have had you know, 10%. So I'm looking at the price over here, 10% of your Bitcoin. And then it drops all the way down to 1% to 2%. So you've lost 80% of your Bitcoin value. Whereas now we're starting to climb again. So it looks like Ethereum is coming back and it's going to potentially break on through and get us more Bitcoin and USD because we also see Bitcoin is rising in value. So this is looking okay. This is looking reasonably solid at the moment after a little bit of a scare on this drop. Now if we bring it back to the two-day chart just to get rid of some of the noise. Volume coming in at these lows. Great sign. Next thing that we want to see, break past these swing tops at 0.032, and then of course this swing top here at 0.035. They're the, the confirmations for me. Above the 50%, fantastic. Safe bet, 0.035, just above that. That's a safer play, because right now we're still, it's still possible we could break down from here. So the safer bet is buying up here as big, uh, Ethereum crosses the 0.035. Litecoin. Last one we want to have a look at, see if there was any sort of PayPal effect to Litecoin. And I'm pretty sure you know the answer to this. Pretty much no, nothing. That was the one that everyone was waiting for. 
nothing. So let's go back to last night, 30th of March, around 9, uh, it's 19, 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., like we were on the live stream, and then it just faded out from that point, all the way back down. So the news had zero effect. Now we're starting to move again. We have nine minutes left on this hourly bar. It's late at night for the US. That's possible why the volume is down. I want to see this top break. That $199, obviously $200 psychological level. That needs to break and hold again for Litecoin against US dollar. More importantly, Litecoin against BTC continues on its woeful path further and further down. So it's only just above its recent major lows at 0 0.0032. We're currently at 0 0.0033, so only barely above that. And it's been a sorry story for some time for Litecoin against Bitcoin. At some point, like you, like we always say in the videos, it, it should pump somewhere. But right now we're just seeing a mega, mega bull market, a uh, bear market against Bitcoin. So I've got some day counts here as to what I hope to happen after we get a bit of a pump. And on previous runs for Litecoin, it has shown 68 days up, 69 days up, 113 days up. So basically, very similar time frames on the way that it, uh, the time frames that it pumps to its top from its absolute low to absolute top. So that gives you some idea of when the pump could be over. Now this pump here was in the lead up to Litecoin halving. So there is a little more time in that one there. People know about that. These were altcoin pumps. These are in altcoin season, one massive pump, another massive pump. And so far, Litecoin has not pumped in altcoin season. So that's Litecoin. There was no, uh, basically no PayPal effect across any of those three currencies. We're not looking at Bitcoin Cash. It's almost irrelevant these days, unfortunately. Sorry if you're a holder and an absolute BCH maxi believer. We're not gonna look at that today. Litecoin, no movement. Ethereum, huge setup. I'm very bullish on Ethereum at the moment. Bitcoin, I'm very bullish on it long term. Don't get me wrong. But Bitcoin, I am not convinced that we're going to break through just yet. There's a few more areas that I want to see it cross and hold with some conviction, some strong volume. Otherwise, probably retest some um, lower levels. Nothing major. 10% fall, 15% fall. It's no, it, it's no big deal. I don't know if it's going to happen. That's all I'm looking at at the moment. So that's my wrap up of those three on PayPal. Nothing happened there. What are your thoughts? Do you think it was priced in already? Looking at this tweet. Yes, priced in. We had a little change here. 128 votes now since we've been filming. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Go over to the Twitter. Go over to my Instagram. Follow me over there. Q&As on Instagram. Polls on Twitter and YouTube. Be sure to subscribe. Like the video up. Today is the last day that you can get on to entering the giveaway draw. Oh, so the giveaway is next week, but today is the last day for the pricing, in, before the price increases on the course. I'll wrap it up there, I'm stumbling on my words. Check it out, all the links are below in the description. If you wanna trade this, get below in the description. SwiftX, Binance, all the good stuff is there. I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.